Hello and welcome to Mediumship Matters with me, Hannah McIntyre. Episode 41, aren't we flying through them on this season? So um, I wanted to carry on from my last podcast a little bit because um, I've had an interesting uh, message from somebody and I'm just really at the moment struggling to return to normal life. Normal life feels really hard. And um, this is something that happens a lot when you go through shifts and changes in your energy and your experience. I think when you go back to normal life, it is really difficult. I may have mentioned this before, but when I teach Reiki, um, I always say to the students, that when they go back after an amazing weekend together, they're going to be different. They're going to be changed somehow and that they will find people around them and life more difficult. And they have to remember that it's them that have changed and not that everyone around them has suddenly become very negative or very difficult. And it's certainly good to remind myself of that at the moment and the irony being that I've actually got a great sense of ease at the moment I've been helping my husband with his business um, and his staff are now trained up and ready to go without me so I'm free I've got two days a week back and that's what I wanted but I didn't want to let him down and that and that's just happened with ease I had this funny thing happen with my car so um, people always ask me what you know what's the magic that you get from spirit what's your most magical experience and my examples I always feel are slightly disappointing to people because it's not um, an effigy of a face appearing on a blank wall and looking at me and smiling and winking it's not um, these big profound gestures it's more practical than that And uh, the other day, uh, Alex and I went to London to see a show and meet up with uh, our lovely friends. And on the way back, I was driving and I said to to Alex, oh, my, um, my throat's sore. I don't know what's going on there. And he thought I said something about my brakes feeling weird. And he said, oh, well, that's okay because you can get them sorted once you're MOT'd you. And I went, what? I was talking about my throat and he went where are you what and then I said oh well while you're looking can you just look at when my MOT's due and it was due two months ago <laughs> whoops um and that to me is the perfect example of when you're in alignment with spirit and you give them enough space to work with you now Alex would say he's not in alignment with spirit he doesn't communicate with the spirit world he's not 100% sure that he believes in the spirit world and that's absolutely fine by me but they still managed to get what they needed to get across so that I would realize I'd drop the ball there and that's the kind of magical, wonderful thing. Then I was awake away for a week at Arthur Finlay, and then I came back yesterday, I had to try and book it in, and they had a space for me this morning, all done, all dusted, all legal, breathe a sigh of relief. But it's just so funny the way that they can work with that. But yeah, it just feels like everything has changed, and I'm different but I can't tell you how. I just am. And I'm trying to work out who I am now in this space and where I belong and what I want to do. So that's interesting. I mean, let's be honest, I've been in that space for months now, but it feels even stronger. (laughs) So who knows? Who knows where I'm going to end up or what's going to happen next? Yeah, interesting. And I wanted to uh, talk quickly about um, Eddie. Eddie, you've commented on my Facebook page and you've said that you don't agree with the concept of advanced groups. Now, I love this. I love this because I've been sat with this since you wrote that message and just thinking about it. And 
I know what I think you mean, but I might be wrong because there's nothing there's nothing worse than assuming, is there? But what I think you meant is that um, to assume that you're advanced means that you think you know all the answers. It's a bit like being a Reiki master, master of nothing. Um, as soon as you need to introduce yourself as a master, you should be realising you've mastered zippity doo -dah. Um But I think it might be that. Um, and I just want to say, I agree. I agree that in some places at some times, it's really good to collaborate with people who are at the, right at the beginning of their journey. And it's good to work with people that are more uh, developed in their connection, more experienced in their connection than you. Um, but the good thing about uh, when you go on a week long course is that groups are mixed and you do have that experience. But I, I do stand by, people shouldn't put themselves in groups higher level than they are um, because it is frustrating and difficult. And yeah, you could say if I was perhaps more spiritual in inverted commas, that I should be happy to have time on the course spent covering things that are quite basic. But from my perspective, I also, I'm quite a practical person, as you guys know. I also think that I don't want to pay to be taught stuff that I was taught five years ago. And there's always something to be said about repeating lessons and going back through lessons. I understand that completely. Um, the only thing we know for sure is that we don't know anything. But I think that there's also more exploration that can take place in a group that is more advanced. And the only way I can liken this is um, doing the Azui Reiki where you have the three stages and when I teach it, you, you do it over a space of time. I don't think you should rush through your Reiki attunements. The longer you sit with them, the more you will learn. Um, but if you were teaching a Reiki Masters, there's a certain level of sort of conversation and development that happens in a Reiki Master when you are teaching people to teach and teaching people how to teach Reiki and teaching people how to experience that energy. And there's also a more, there's more philosophy, I always think, in a Reiki Masters than there is in uh, a Reiki one, because at Reiki one, you're just opening up to learn your abilities. So that's where I'm at with that. But I'm I'm glad that you said that because it really made me think about it and where I'm at. And that comment combined with my own general, whatever the hell I is, it is that I have, the, the meanness of me, my ego, my doubt. Oh God, I had to listen to my podcast back twice yesterday just to check that I didn't sound like an asshole. And isn't that interesting that as soon as I do a podcast where I say, I feel like I've actually made a breakthrough. I feel like I can say I'm a good medium. I feel proud of myself. I then have some sort of mini crisis and think, who are you to say that? You sound like an asshole and have to listen to it back to see if I have put some top, complete buttholery online and that just got me thinking really um, and I had a wonderful uh, spiritual assessment laid yesterday with a lady in uh, Boston who was so open and so ready and it just this beautiful energy of hers and I was talking to her and as always with the spirit world because they're so clever you've got that um, you're talking to them and you're giving them a message that validates them but there's also something in that message for you and uh, it's so interesting this breakthrough that I've experienced this week which I'm trying to hold on to and not let my human take it away because I'm aware of that too it's a fragile thing I can put myself back down a step if I choose to just by the way I talk about myself and what I allow but we make ourselves small all the time, don't we? All of us. We worry and we reduce ourselves. And my question is, dear listener, for who? 
Now I know that I've been irritating at times to some people. I know that. I know I'm a bit much for some people sometimes. I know that. I know that I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I get that. But I also know that generally speaking, I'm a good person. I try hard. I'm kind. I'm caring. So where has it come from? Because nobody's ever said to me, you should dim your light. You should make yourself smaller. You should be less than you are. You should apologise for existing. So where has that come from? And I was looking on Instagram yesterday and there were lots of posts about um, things that it just seemed like a real line. I feel like the spirit working with me, but a real line of posts of this is what people have done to me. I'm taking my power back from people who have taken my power away. Um, things about narcissists, things about people saying this stuff. And I just thought, has anyone really said that to you? And I agree that for some of us, they have. I'm not saying that that. But I also think for the vast majority of us, we are making ourselves small because we are, we, us, we are telling ourselves that we should be kept small. We are telling ourselves that people won't like us if we get bigger. Now, I know that sometimes I see people around me who I know love me, struggle with me, um, struggle with the success that I've had, um, struggle with, I, I can see that, I know that, I understand that, um, it manifests in different ways. And I also understand that that is more about them than it is about me. Just the same as when I was talking about um, people who get up on the stage AFC repeatedly and how I was like, oh my God, you're such a stage hogger. But what I was really annoyed with was my own inability to put my hand up and put myself in that position. It wasn't about them, it was about me. I understand that. And um, I get I get why people feel the way that they do sometimes because they're dealing with their own stuff. But when did I start taking that on? When did I start deciding that I should make myself smaller? Is it something to do with empathy? Is it to do with, well, I can feel that you're annoyed with me? I think it might be. I think it's to do with being able to feel when you've upset somebody. And even if they don't say it, just knowing that somebody is out of sorts with you um, is a horrible energy to sit in. And I think those most of you listening will have been empaths since children and so you've experienced that it's not just about what people say is it it's not just about their actions it's also about experiencing how you make people feel and I have always been well apart from the stage that I had where I allowed myself to get folded very small by myself I've always been quite confident quite bubbly um, I've always liked being on the stage I've always wanted to be out there and talking to people I've always loved people and talking to people about their lives and finding out who they are which I think is quite important if you want to be a medium because uh, whether you're dealing with a spirit or a person in the physical sense you are communicating with people and hearing about their lives so I can see what all of these things were for but I think I think it's to do with the empathy. I was wondering, I didn't know where this was going to go. I've just written on the piece of paper, you may have heard me rustling out. Making yourself small to fit in with who? Whose idea? Whose idea of who you should be? What if our idea of who we should be is from sitting in other people's energy, which is their reaction to us and is actually nothing to do with us? It's nothing to do with us at all, is it? Um, unless you're being a complete douche and you're going up to people and you're being 
mean or unkind or unpleasant. Generally speaking, how people react to you is none of your business. But of course, if you're empathic and you haven't learned to have that self-control, I think sometimes with the best will in the world of control and empathy, you still feel how people feel and it takes you by surprise. Then you felt their reaction to you. And I think that must be something in our development, Spirit has shown me childhood here, that when you're a child and you you might go to somebody who's having an adult, for example, who's having a terrible day and they've just found out that they can't afford to pay their MOT for their car and they're really worried and they're really stressed out and their mum's ill and they don't know whether to put her in a home and they've got all of these adult things to deal with and you skip in as a child full of joy and full of happiness and want to be with the adult and you can't understand why then the adult responds to you in a angry or an overloaded way because you don't have the capacity to understand their side of it you just know how they react to you is that what we're all dealing with I'd love your comments I'd love to know what you think but I just want to know with the exception of those of you that have been made small by people and I have been made small by people um I was bullied at school and I became a bully in some senses I wasn't always the kindest I wasn't like the traditional bully I was traditionally bullied by people but because I was nervous and because I was unhappy I then you know survival of the fittest you do what you have to do to survive and um yeah I think there's why did I take on other people's stuff why as an adult do I still do that when somebody is a little bit off with me why do I think it's about me and not just a reflection of where they're at why am I so bad at putting in boundaries with people who are manipulative because I've had some friendships with people that would blow your minds in understanding the damage that can be caused by being a people pleaser and being unable to say no and put boundaries and barriers in for yourself And we've got to start looking at what causes that and also how that impacts our mediumship. Because my view of mediumship is that it's evolving rapidly at the moment. It's changing. Uh, The way that we are working is changing. The way that the spirit world are working with us is changing. And that is good. I want to say that. I think that's a brilliant thing. I think it does need to evolve. It does need to grow. It does need to change. And then funny, that was something that Tony Stockwell was talking about at college. And I was sitting there laughing, thinking, okay, it's not just me then. It is shifting. It is changing. The way that we are connecting, the way that we are experiencing spirit is changing. And then you go to a group where everybody's done it the same way for 70 years and if it ain't broke don't try to fix it and you want to shine your light but nobody there wants to shine their light or you go to a group and you or a room and you demonstrate but nobody there it always amazes me it always amazes me and I'm going to be honest and say that this happens a lot in in the churches that I've been in which is very few but Um, but also in demonstrations where people come and they are so nonplussed by the spirit world. They are so just sitting there, bored, unimpressed, unresponsive. And even if they get a message, it's like, oh yeah, that's my aunt. Mm -hmm. Not wow. I can't believe this, that you are communicating with the spirit world. The medium is working with spirit. I can't believe my aunt is coming in. It's just so amazing and so wonderful to hear from her. Where is the wow? And I think it's very hard for those of us that are developing, that are really passionate about it and really excited by spirit and still finding the wonder in it and still finding the mind-blowing stuff to then work with people who are almost bored. When I worked at Tesco on customer services, there was a load of ladies on the till who were like portals of doom. You you went near them and you felt like you were being sucked into their negativity. And they never smiled at a customer and they never said hello. 
and they acted like it, this customer was doing that they were doing a customer a favor and when you ever spoke to them they would say things like i hate it here um, I hate this job, they don't treat you right, this job is rubbish, and they would moan, 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 moan. And they had worked there for 20 years. And they were choosing to continue in that cycle of moaning and victimness and negativity and pulling people in with them. And it's the same for me with spirit. It is simple as, if you don't love it, why are you doing it? If your mind is not blown by the spirit world and the amazement of it and the synchronicities and the experience, why? Why are you putting yourself through it? And why are we allowing ourselves to be made smaller and squashed and told that we can't do things the way we want to and told that we can't work the way we want to by people who aren't getting any pleasure and enjoyment from it or from ourselves being told from ourselves i know that when i wanted to do evidential mediumship the person that told me that i couldn't and that i was greedy and that i shouldn't ask for that was me wasn't anybody else it was me me through and through yeah so these are my musings and if you're on a development journey and you find yourself in a group and the group doesn't feel like a good fit for you, don't stay in it. Don't stay in it. Find a group that does feel like a good fit for you. If you're working with a teacher and that teacher is not inspiring you and that teacher is also doing that blooming sales thing that I hate, which is holding information back, holding their teachings back so that you'll have to pay for the next course if you want to know how to do this, this and this. It's like unlocking the upgrades. Um, find yourself a teacher that just wants to work with you and you to be the best you can be. Because I think there's too many teachers out there now that want people to put them on a pedestal. And rather than, I want everyone to be on, on a level with me. Imagine, imagine 10 mediums all of a really um, integrity, I'm gonna say it, Eddie, I'm gonna say advanced standard, not advanced in that I know it all, but able to communicate and able to connect. Imagine 10 mediums getting together and then just pushing the barriers and the boundaries of their mediumship. Confidence in the, confident in the, uh, their abilities to connect and confident enough to experiment. What could we create? What could we see? What could we do? So, Wherever you're at, whether you are developing or whether you are just living your life, don't allow yourself to be made small by what you think other people think. And if people are telling you that you should be small and telling you that you should hold back, bin them off, put in some boundaries, don't share your hopes and dreams with people that you know are going to squash them. Share them with the people that will cheerlead you. So I hope you've enjoyed my musings today. I would love your thoughts on this because as you can tell, this is one of those podcasts where I've just come in with a question and then talked it through with you. So let me know what you think. Emailing please. Uh, podcast at hannahmedium.co.uk And... Yeah, I want to know what you think. Who made you small? Have you always been large or have you allowed yourself to be squashed? I think most of us allow ourselves to be squashed. And how has that impacted you and changed your life? There we go. Thanks very much for listening and we'll catch up again soon.